All right, welcome back. Today's video is gonna be a little bit different. Today's video is gonna be about my experience with DMT, not in, not in a healing context, not in a therapeutic use, in a very recreational and very dumb way. And I'm making this video in the hopes that it will serve as a caution and also as a um, maybe an instruction manual for how not to do <laughs> DMT. So the story starts with, so I was going through a breakup and I was just fucking crushed. You know, I thought my life had no meaning. And so what did I do? I decided to escape. So I fly down to Mexico City, get there around four or five in the afternoon and then hang out with my friends. And then by the time it's midnight, midnight to one in the morning, the friend who I was going to do the DMT with shows up and he's like, I've got it. Do we want to do it tonight? And everybody else that was kind of going to tag along was like, nah, I think I'm going to, let's do it a different day. And this was, this was 2019. At the time, I still smoked marijuana, still did all the drugs, had never done any of these medicines therapeutically. So I decided, all right, you know what? I didn't come to Mexico City to say no, right? Like, let's fucking do DMT and let's do it right now. So <laughs> me and that friend, we go up to his uh, apartment and then he prepares it and he tells me, all right, so you have to hit it three times harder after each time you have to make sure that you inhale every time and and whatnot so i was like all right and i was feeling really nervous and i was feeling even more nervous because that friend and i had sort of the conversations we had had that night before doing this were like i was learning information that i didn't know about him right like since the last time I had seen him, he had started doing heavier drugs that I was like really afraid of at the time and really had preconceived sort of judgments about from the movies and from, you know, TV and media. We had also talked about death, a roommate of mine who had passed away. And so conversation was already kind of not, you know, not setting the right uh, environment. And so we're in his apartment, just me and him. His girlfriend's at work at a bar. She's going to be back in a couple hours. He dims the lights and then he brings it up to my mouth, right? So all I have to do is just, and I was like, all right, let's, let's do it. Let's fucking do it. Just trust the process. Just everything's going to be okay. And, and mind you, let me try and describe this apartment to you. It's like a one bedroom apartment. There's not like cockroaches. It's not dirty like that, but it's not an organized apartment. You know, it's like a, it's like a creative person who does a lot of drugs as apartment. So I hit it once and then my friend immediately after I hit it once and I'm like holding it, holding it for as long as he told me to. And then he says, all right, hit it, hit it again, hit it again. So I go and I hit it again. And the second time I hit it is when it just like uh like that scene in the avengers where fucking doctor strange pushes fucking the hulk out of the hulk everything kind of slowed down and it was just and my understanding of where i was and what was happening just fell apart right so i hit it that second time and i feel like my throat is on fire and so at that point i am just like like motionless and I don't feel like I can exert any amount of influence on what happens anymore I'm just kind of in this limbo and then he says hit it again hit it again and somehow I'm hitting it again and he says hit it again hit it again and I hit it again and he says this like six more times right and after the fact he tells me that that never happened but in my state of mind it was like Man, I've hit this like fucking 10, 15 times now. <laughs> What's going on? And so, yeah, so I, I hit it maybe the, the last time, which to him was the third, to me was the 15th. I immediately had this feeling of, oh, this is like, 
this is a serious thing that I just did. It, it ejected me from the world immediately. It just ejected me into something else. And, and my first thought was like, I had thoughts where I was kind of comparing what I was doing to like, like Requiem for a Dream, that Darren Aronofsky movie, where I was just like, oh, I'm in serious shit now. Like, I just did something, you know, I'm, I am that person now that's just fucking like shooting up and just like, nah, just my life is fucking, what is my life, right? What was coming up were all of my judgments. And then I sort of just collapsed onto his bed, went into some other, some other realm or some other thing um, for, for a little bit. And it was like, I had this flash of just do's and don'ts. I'm never doing this again. My friend, who was one of the ones that was going to do it with us, he can't do it. He can't do it. There's no way he can do it. And then it was like I was in the room, but I wasn't. But there was a red lamp on my friend's ceiling. And I heard this little like... And just that noise associated with the red and then my saliva, which was... I think I was fucking drooling. Another thought was like, oh, I just died. <laughs> and there's blood pouring <laughs> down my fucking mouth. And I, I was just there and I was dead, but I was still in the room. And I just kind of looked or looked for my friend and all of a sudden it wasn't my friend anymore. It was like the dust from Lost doing a perimeter around the bed. And I was just like, holy shit. It's not like when you have a dream and, and they shoot you and you die and you're like, oh my God. And then you wake up. No, this is like, they shoot you, you die, and you're lying there just realizing what you've done and that you've done this to yourself. I ruined my life. <laughs> I fucked up my whole life. The, my friend, who is now dust, is pacing, and he's freaking out because he knows that I just died, and he's probably waiting for the fucking ambulance or the police and... And this is how people are going to find me. This is what is going to be. This is what how my life is going to have ended. Fucking dead on, a, on a, some overdose of drug. Just a fucking junkie, right? <laughs> this is all going through my mind. I'm freaking out, right? I can't do anything. It, just this is what I'm like. But, but in my head, I'm just freaking out. And then every time I would close my eyes was when I would go back into that other realm where like I was just a worm. I was a worm and I was underground somewhere just fucking sliding and slithering through the crevices of the earth. You're just the worm now and you don't have you don't have an, an understanding of what's happening. Yeah, I I was convinced that I had died. And I thought of my mom, I thought of my dad, I thought of just all of the people that were going to feel like I had let them down. Like all of this judgment about what I was doing. Eventually, I, I, I tried to talk for a little bit and it was just slurring my speech. No real words were coming out. And eventually I told my friend, I'm scared. He turned the lights on stood against the wall and he said okay it's okay I'm, I'm right here and it's gonna pass it's okay just 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 go back into it it's it's all gonna be okay I'm right here and I was like no I want it to stop right now like how fucking long has it been and he said he said it's been five minutes <laughs> but it, it it's just gonna last like 15 so you're almost there like once I realized that I wasn't actually dead the panic subsided a little bit, and I was like, okay, if I'm not dead, then I must be breathing. And then all of a sudden I was breathing, and I could feel myself, okay, so I'm breathing. And then I was like, maybe if I just keep breathing, then I'll be okay. And then all of a sudden, I closed my eyes, and I fucking kid you not, I just saw a clip in my brain of Joe Rogan just being like, oh yeah, I smoke DMT, and DMT is... It's actually good for you, man. It's just whatever his spiel was about DMT. And I was like, oh shit, yeah, like, I'm not some fucking junkie. Like, Joe Rogan's done this, right? Like, I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not a fucking loser. I didn't ruin my life. 
And then I kind of just latched on to Joe Rogan's face and was like, all right, I'm safe. As long as I keep thinking about Joe Rogan, I will be safe. Slowly, I started to kind of come out of it. I was able to move again. I was able to like ask for things. And for about an hour after like the, the peak, you can't do shit about it moment, I was still pretty like paranoid and freaked out and just, I had my blanket covering me and just like afraid to be in the room by myself. And so, yeah, so, so I'll end it there, but then it just a couple of things I want to say about it. I'm not saying this is awesome. Go do it. If what I just described sounded awesome to you, then, Hey, maybe you need to <laughs> learn from your mistakes and not mine. So a couple reasons why I think that it failed. I definitely learned from this experience, but it was just kind of like t the way Tucker Max describes it is really, it helped me understand it. It's like trying to learn how to swim in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. You're just going to drown. So part of the reason was obviously sleep deprivation. Like it was two in the morning when we decided to do it. I had traveled that day. I was just exhausted. Part of doing these medicines therapeutically is like being in a good mental state fully charged because the experiences can drain you so much and so i was already drained and i was like i'm gonna fucking squeeze every last bit of this juice that i can <laughs> the second one was the setting the the literal place that i was in was not very friendly and there was a fucking theremin, which I had never listened to a theremin before, and the lights were dim, so it was a dark room. I wasn't familiar with the space. I was in a foreign city. I was just all very, like, unfamiliar. And then I didn't really have an intention. So it was just kind of... My intention was, like, I want to experience something crazy. Set and setting was way off. And then I think trust was a big thing. And there was just something in my gut that was like, I, I hadn't seen that friend in four years. And again, he had just told me about all these other heavy drugs he was doing. And so there was definitely an element of like, how well do I really know you? I was exhausted. I was just, what's going on? And so I didn't really trust him. I did it against my own intuition. And then... I would say maybe the biggest thing is that I didn't know that what happened to me is something that can happen to you. I had no understanding of ego death. And so when it happened to me, I just bought into it because I didn't have a concept. I didn't know that you could believe you were dying and that you could be totally fine. And the final thing is that I hadn't really done much sort of internal work so naturally, that stuff's going to come up, right? All of my insecurities, I had no real map of any of that. And so when I was fucking ejected onto the map, I had no, no idea as to what direction to go in. It traumatized me more than it healed me. And so yeah, so that was my experience with DMT. Definitely not something that I recommend doing that way. Like I definitely want to do it therapeutically at some point. Just considering the level that that medicine is at, it's like I have to do a lot of work with other medicines before I graduate to that. You know, I thought I could cheat my way through these, just jump straight to the big one. And it's like, well, you got a rude awakening. So thank you for listening. That's my story. And um, if you enjoyed it, I've done a couple other videos where I talk about MDMA and psilocybin and in therapeutic contexts. So check those out if you want to. Uh, otherwise, I'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in and have a wonderful week.